Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. David P. Proden, and welcome to Educational Leadership 655, Pupil Services and Non-Discrimination with Viterbo University in La Crosse, Wisconsin. This week begins on Monday, February 27th, and concludes on Sunday, March 5th. A recap, child and human trafficking. Many of you found few professional development resources in your districts. This might be an area that would be best addressed as a consortium professional development event. Remember getting multiple districts in your proximity together to talk about what they do to address child and human trafficking, involve human services, involve law enforcement. Also expect that your state organizations dig into this uncomfortable area that it appears on agendas for conferences. Embrace and step into that advocacy role. Yes, you, this is important. Meet with your elected officials. They will meet with you for coffee, a chat, informal. Let them know what is happening in schools and likewise have them inform you about the trend in legislation at a local, state, and then maybe even a national level. Contact your organizations that you are a member of, such as OSA and WCAS. Let them know, again, what you are experiencing at the school level. Write a letter to the editor or write a an article for educational journals. It's not that difficult. I was on PBS twice. I wrote two books and I never anticipated doing any of that, but it was very important work for advocacy for schools and then also for school safety. So keep an open mind. Anything is possible and you have much value to contribute. Advocacy. Step forward, step up, step into that advocacy role. ELL. I posted the one page Milwaukee Public Schools quick reference guide to Afghanistan and Afghan culture for educators and staff. Your wise dash data will reveal trends in ELL in your district. So you can look back several years, a number of you did that and shared that data. I will return your graded learning team assignment. A few things, uh, make it work for you locally. Be visual with it and contact people such as your school librarian or information media specialist. They can provide books about allergy awareness such as Ali. The Allergic Elephant, a children's story of peanut allergies by Nicole Smith. So we don't think about including the librarian when we are addressing allergies. EpiPens, use expired EpiPens. Practice with them. I worked with a school nurse who would hand an expired EpiPen to a staff member who was likely to administer the EpiPen and, and would say, stab it into this grapefruit. And wow, it gave the experience of what it was like for that auto injector um, to be activated. Otherwise, EpiPen just needed to be disposed of. So consider using the expired EpiPens in trainings and have people actually hold an EpiPen so they understand the size and the weight and what it looks like and how it functions. Because otherwise it's too abstract, right? You just talk about an EpiPen or you show a picture. Go beyond that with training staff safely, right? I, here's something I learned from an allergy summit. Uh, I, was, I was doing this as a director of special education and pupil services. We had a number of districts come together and someone, EMT, said, when you administer EpiPen to somebody, take a marker and write EpiPen on their arm and the time. EpiPen, 11 21 a.m as that person gets transported to the hospital people are going to be asking the question what time was the epipen administered right you should hopefully be documenting when symptoms symptoms were observed and so forth but when was the epipen administered it gives so much time it buys time right people lose that they don't think about this when they put the plans together that um, train people that if an epipen is administered you're grabbing a marker and you're writing on that child's arm EpiPen and the time. Week five shout outs. Kristen shared that she scoured her district's website for 20 minutes and was unable to locate anything about human trafficking. I think that's not uncommon. There's not a lot out there on school district websites about human trafficking, child trafficking, professional development, um, how to report it. So it's an area that needs uh, much more attention. We need to be much more robust. I searched 
the CISA services menu and was unable to find professional development or other resources for identifying, reporting, and investigating trafficking. So that would be something to suggest to your CISA. Imagine the need is out there in all districts. Angie wrote about a middle school student who immigrated from Guatemala and had spent the last month in a detention center in Texas. Her district had very few EL teachers, and there was a gap in finding the support for this student. Who? Could help him and who understood the culture of Guatemala. I think that happens more frequently than what we acknowledge. Jenny noticed that her district did not have a policy related to ICE agents on campus and noted there's a lot of room for interpretation of expectations by principals and teachers. I encourage you to use Lodi's policy as a dialogue starter. This isn't an us versus them. As I shared before, discretion varies across people. And in 2018, a student shared with me that a staff member approached them and said, if ICE agents arrive on campus, I am going to take students who I am uncertain about their immigration status. I am going to take them in my personal vehicle and drive them away from the school. That was their interpretation of what the Board of Education, uh, what their philosophy was, what their expectations were, where this wasn't written anywhere in policy or practice, but that was the impression that this staff member had, that they were afforded this discretion, also that then the school would have their back if they went ahead with this. Huge disconnect of what the assumption was from that administrator and what the perception was from that staff member. In Moodle, school safety is now part of the formal or informal job description of every pupil services director. This is addressed in greater depth in Educational Leadership 651, Special Education Legal Issues, I instruct that class each fall. Some of you might have had that class. Some of this information might be redundant, but it is worthy of being repeated. And now you will look at information through the Director of Pupil Services lens. School safety, crisis preparedness, investigations, K-12 counseling scope and sequence, FEMA school multi-hazard emergency planning course. That is due March 12th. That's online. There's no cost to it. Assume the lens of the pupil services director as you complete that course. Consider safety training for English language learners, for students with anxiety, students with 504 plans, students with disabilities. Keep that certificate. Include it with your resume. FEMA courses are free and efficient. Keep that in mind as you seek administrative roles. An option is to have your administrative team take some of those courses together and then print a certificate off. My PBS School Safety Presentations, Matters of Mental Health and Student Profiling, a five-year DPI, Pupil Services Non-Discrimination Report. Your district completes this on a five-year schedule, so see where you're at with this and if you can locate the most current one. Balance quantitative or the numbers with qualitative, which would be interviews. A lot of people don't include a single quote. You want to download that school counseling K-12 scope and sequence document. It's something I strongly recommend for all schools. I would add human trafficking as one of the areas and make sure that that was addressed from kindergarten all the way through grade 12 in some capacity. Update that twice a year and share it annually with your board of education. You will be asked, what are you doing at the elementary schools for bullying prevention? And boom, you pull out that document and you can say at second grade, this is what's happening at third grade, at fourth grade, at fifth grade, and so forth. That's a fluid document continually gets updated. Pupil services, legal question and answer. Think of frequently asked questions about pupil services, such as custody issues, harassment via social media, etc. This type of presentation is always best to do in the format of where you provide the questions to your school attorney ahead of time. The attorney researches, you know then how that interfaces with your Board of Education policies and your local procedures. Put 10 questions together, talk with your district administrator. The reflective teaching annotation. Litigation is almost impossible to avoid in today's schools. Act in the best interest of the child. Document, 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 and be aware of Board of Education policy. Review your job description. You might find that you're responsible for an area in which you don't have appropriate training or support resources. School of Heirs extensively discusses the benefits of various 
school tabletop exercises. As a pupil services director, you'll need to anticipate the needs of students with disabilities, anxiety, ELL, in the event of a power outage, cyber attack, evacuation, or intruder. From the syllabus, weeks six and seven are together in the syllabus. From School of Errors, read chapter 18, Incident Command Structure, and also chapter 28, Bollards and Planters. Think about the pupil services director's expectation to understand ICS. You must maintain a careful balance of having a school appear welcoming and supportive versus looking fortified and frightening. The final assignment paper about existing pupil services practices can be done in an alternate format as a 20-minute phone call with me. I will soon provide a shared Google document with several appointment dates and times. Look for that document to be posted in the middle of March. I'll make an announcement when I post it. Continue posting to class. You're doing a wonderful job and spring hopefully is just around the corner. <music>